God. Yes, he is. Hallelujah. Let's stand this morning. Bible says this is the day the Lord hath made. I will do what? Rejoice, Rejoice and be glad. glad in it. How many's come this morning with your mind made up? You're going to give God glory and praise and magnify Him regardless of what's going on. He's worthy, isn't He? Hallelujah. What a great day today is. Why don't we lift our hands and ask God to touch us today? We love you, Lord Jesus. We thank you, Lord God, for the opportunity and privilege we have of gathering together. We ask, Lord Jesus, that the windows of heaven would be opened up. Lord, that we might send glory and praise and honor to you. And Lord, you said, as we send up our praise to you, you would turn that around into blessings. We don't praise for blessings. We just know it's a direct result of praising. We want to glorify you today with our mouth. We want to glorify you today with our actions. We love you, Lord Jesus. I ask God that you would touch each and every individual, those that are traveling, those that are here, God. Bind us together in that amazing grace, God, that only comes from you. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name, amen. Oh, it's amazing grace, how sweet. amazing, isn't it? Come on, how many is thankful for His grace and His mercy? Thank you, Jesus. Where would we be without Him? Hallelujah, Jesus. Amen. The Lord's going to do great things today. How many will let Him? How many want to partner with Him and allow great things to happen today? Hallelujah. Amen. If you're in 6th, 7th, 8th, or ninth grade, fusion class is going on right now. So we want to invite you to go across the hall. I want you to shake somebody's hand, put a big grin on your face. Let Sister Michelle Smith and Sister Sarah Proffer know you wish them a happy birthday today. Come on, shake somebody's hand. Let them know you're glad to be in the house of the Lord today.
Hallelujah. Oh, let's praise Him. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Allow the Lord to move right now through you. Hallelujah. Allow the Lord to move through you right now. Come on, let's praise Him some more. Hallelujah. Bless you through the choir, and the word is going to bless you today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Shake hands with someone right nearby and say, Let the Lord bless you today. And you may be seated. Mm-hmm. Hallelujah, Jesus. You may be seated. When I call your name for prayer, if you submitted the prayer request, please stand so people will know where you are, that they can come to you and pray with you. God is here in a magnificent way this morning. If you haven't noticed, he is here in a great and mighty way. So allow the Lord to use you today. Allow the Lord to work through you today bless you today and heal you today. If you're in this group that needs healing or whatever your need is, God is here today. We are in a church that believes that God is in our midst. And if you just got your little spiritual antenna up, you can tell that he is in our midst today in a mighty way. Every time we gather together, but today is here in a great way. A couple of victory reports. My sister is in Indiana and my the Frederick Church particularly has been praying for this. I know she has had has got severe kidney problems and had some pneumonia. She's in was not in good shape, but she is now. They've sent her back to the nursing home. The white blood cell count is down, and her fever is down, and that's good because of the antibiotics and the prayer. Please continue to pray for her. her name is Virginia Conrad. She has to have surgery, so I'll probably be flying out at some point to be with her in her surgery for the kidney blockage and so forth. But she definitely needs your prayers. A very severe case of MS. Uh, Devin Rosado, blood pressure is starting to go down. So continue to pray that it's lowering and getting lower and lower and lower. Amen. So these are victory reports and prayer requests at the same time. Sister Charlotte is traveling to Jamaica and needs prayer for her and her family. So let's pray for whoever submitted this. Please stand. We'll pray for travel mercies. Uh, Karen Diaz, who I believe went to the... uh, Fusion Group has a prayer request for Edwin Melendez. Uh, he was born uh, 
with some complications, and they're testing him on Monday. Edwin Melendez. I'm sure she'll have a prayer over there in the fusion as well. Sister Shoup is battling sickness and needs healing in her body, so please stand, sister, and, and we will pray for you. Linda Hubbard is not here today, I don't believe. Pam Cheney has asked a requested prayer for her, and she was not with us Wednesday night as well. Pam also, it says, is having, uh, oh, dad's here, uh, papa's here, Papa Hubbard, amen, he's pa Papa Hubbard, amen, <laughs> he's going to stand in her stead, thank you, brother, amen, uh, Pam, you're having surgery on your foot, okay, so you stand, please, we'll pray for you, Jennifer Johnson is home, uh, sick due to asthma and allergies, has difficulty breathing, and has been on breathing treatments. LaShonda and Dwight have submitted this for Jennifer Johnson. Please stand that we can pray for Jennifer. Uh, Ryan Cheney has a prayer request for Linda. This is Greg Cheney's grandmother, and she has cancer, is not doing well. So brothers, please stand. And we're gonna need a bunch of group, a big group around that one right there. We got a, a concentration of prayer needs right there. Uh, William Thomas Jr., Shady Grove. William Thomas, this is a, a, a request, has, is in Shady Grove Hospital with a urinary tract infection and bacteria in his blood. This is from Billy and Mia. So Billy and Mia, uh, we're going to be praying for William Thomas. He is in the hospital with a infection. And uh, Mia Thomas's brother has passed away. And we need to pray for her and the family. Uh, Sister Kitty, you've got a prayer cloth ready? Okay. And this is for uh, uh, Rihanna. Wait, wait, I'm sorry. Raina needs a prayer cloth, and this is requested by Shawnee Sonora. All right, if you see who is here, if, if you would uh, see the people that need prayer around you, and if you also need prayer and didn't get a chance to submit something here, if you would also stand right now. If you need prayer, amen. Now, the rest of us, let's stand and go to these folks, and we're going to pray in faith. Pastor, do you have anything needful? Okay. We got many people traveling. Pray for people that are traveling, including pastor, senior pastors traveling. I want to pray for them and everybody else that's traveling. How many believe that God can move on every one of these requests? I know we said them kind of quickly, but God heard them. You heard them, and now by faith we're praying for them right now. Let's lift our hands and pray. In Jesus' name, we love you, Lord God. We love you, Lord God. We feel your mighty presence in this room, Lord God. We confess your presence in this room, and we're thankful for your presence here right now. We cling to that presence that's here right now and believe that you're here to heal these needs right now in the name of Jesus. You can heal the needs that are standing in this building right now. You can continue to work in the name of Jesus, on the healings that are needed here in this building and those that are not with us. Uh, continue to touch Devon, Lord God. Uh, continue to work on this blood pressure situation and bring it down even lower. Touch my sister, Virginia Conrad. Continue to heal her body in the name of Jesus and help her through this surgery, Lord God. Uh, in the name of Jesus, pray for Charlotte as she travels to Jamaica, Lord God. Uh, we pray for Edwin. Uh, the, doing testing on Monday for this condition, this complications, Lord God. In Jesus' name, you can do a miracle right now, Lord God, that the test will find out that, that everything's all right. In Jesus' name, we're asking you to touch Sister Shoup right now. In Jesus' name, put a great healing virtue upon her as we pray right now. In Jesus' name, the, her, the healing virtue of Jesus Christ is in this room. We plead the blood of Jesus over Sister Shoup right now. Heal her body, Lord. Touch Linda Hubbard, Lord. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, let angels of mercy sweep in to that room right now. Let the anointing of the Holy Ghost come and heal her body even right now as we pray the prayer of faith, Lord God. Touch Sister Pam in her surgery on Tuesday, Lord God. Guide the hands of the doctors and the anesthesiologists and those in the hospital in Jesus' name. Touch Sister Pam right now in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, put a healing upon this body, Lord God. And maybe the surgery not even be necessary. In Jesus' name, God, you're able to do all things. 
You're able to do all things, Lord. Touch Jennifer Johnson. Uh, heal this asthma and these allergies, Lord. Uh, oh, put your hand upon her breathing right now in Jesus' name. Uh, touch Linda that has cancer, Lord God. You're a healing God. Uh, you're a healing God. Touch this cancer, Lord God. Uh, comfort Ryan, Lord God. Uh, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, touch William Thomas Jr., Lord God, in Shady Grove. Uh, touch Mia and her family, Lord Touch the Thomas family in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, we plead your blood, Lord God, your healing blood, your comfort, Lord. You are the God of all comfort, Jesus. In the name of the Lord God, help Raina right now in the name of Jesus through this prayer cloth, Lord. Touch Raina, Lord, in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. Let's lift our hands and thank you for what he's done in this building right now what he's done in your life, what he's done in these that have stood today, what he's doing outside of this building, in hospitals, uh, in rooms, in homes. In Jesus' name, we thank you, Lord God. Uh, we thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. serve a great God, why don't we give him a hand of praise of thanksgiving. to be my everything and that is why I 
He doesn't change. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Does anybody believe that? Come on, does anybody believe he's the same yesterday, today, and forever? He's the same God when you first met him as he is today, and he's going to be the same God 10, 20, 30 years from now. I'm glad about it. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Turn to somebody, give him a high five, and say, I'm glad for the love of Jesus in my life.
God. Yes, he is. And he changes not, the Bible says. I'm glad about that. How about you? Amen. The Lord is so good. And we're so thankful for the opportunity that we have to be gathered together and worshiping him in spirit and in truth. Amen. If you're not standing, let's stand. Go to the, your Bibles and turn to the book of Luke. Amen. We want to encourage you. Have a good time at Life Group tonight. Enjoy yourself. And then let's, as we close out this summer, let's put a little effort into our midweek congregations. We've got a couple weeks left, I guess three or four weeks left before school really ramps up. And uh, let's close out this summer with a big bang in our congregations, allowing God to move and uh, have his way. Amen? Amen. There's some great things happening there. We want that to continue on. Luke chapter 12, verse number 16. The Bible says, And he spake a parable unto them, saying, The ground of a certain rich man brought forth plenty. And he thought within himself, saying, What shall I do, because I have no room where to bestow my fruits? And he said, This will I do. I will pull down my barns and build greater, and there I will bestow all my fruits and my goods. And I will say to my soul, Soul, Thou hast much goods laid up for many years. Take thine ease, eat, drink, and be merry. I don't have verse 20 there. I think I do. Verse 20 says, But God said unto him, Thou art a fool. This night thy soul shall be required of me of thee, then whose shall those things be which thou hast provided? Verse 20, but God said unto him, thou soul, this night, thou fool, I'm sorry, thou fool, this night thy soul shall be required of thee, then who shall those things be which thou hast provided? One verse of scripture, or two verses of scripture in James chapter 4. You can just look to the screen. James chapter 4, verse 13 and verse 14. The Bible says, Go to now, ye that say, Today or tomorrow we will go into such a city and continue there for a year and buy and sell and get grain. Verse 14 says, Whereas ye know not what shall be on the morrow, for what is your life? It is even a vapor that appeareth for a little time and then vanisheth away. Luke tells us of the story of the man who the blessings were abounding in his life. And as a result of the blessings in his life, his advice to himself was, take it easy. James tells us, we don't know what tomorrow holds for us. Because we may or may not be here. Just for a few moments, I want to talk to you about this subject. Tomorrow, we think, tomorrow always comes. Tomorrow always comes. 
Put your Bibles down. Let's lift our hands one more time to heaven and ask God to touch us as we enter into his word. We love you, Lord Jesus. We thank you for this moment of time. We thank you for your spirit that we have felt here today, the moving Lord God. We ask, Lord, as we open up our hearts and our minds that you would touch us, you would speak to us, that you would help us. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for all the blessings in our life, but let us not take them for granted, God. Let us not, as this man said, rest. But let us keep our eyes focused on you, consecrated, dedicated, and moving forward in your name. In Jesus' name we pray, and everybody say amen. Amen. God bless you. You may be seated. If you have never been baptized in Jesus' name, the Bible speaks of this throughout the New Testament. Baptism is not a way to become a member in a church. Baptism is not an outward sign of an inward decision. Baptism is for the remission of sins. And until we have had our sins washed away, that we have had ourselves cleansed by the application of his name in our life, then we are holding that as if it were luggage and bags and bags and bags that we have to carry around with us. But through the spiritual application of his name in our life, through the physical application of baptism, amen, we can be free from our past and ready to live. I'm always glad for the freedom that God has given us. Amen. If you've never been baptized in Jesus' name, as the Scripture says, immediately after the service, if you'll meet us right here at this plant on the platform, we will help you. We have a baptismal mobile out front, and uh, it's full of hot water. We have changing rooms, and uh, you can leave here refreshed, clean, and full of the forgiveness of Jesus Christ in your life. Amen. God bless you. Tomorrow. Most people give little thought about tomorrow. Oh, we know we got to get up and go to work. We know we have certain activities that we have to do. But we live as though tomorrow will always come, as though life never ends. We, uh, we recognize that there is an end. We recognize that it is coming, but the idea seems to be far away. Some people plan for retirement, some people plan for their next vacation, some people plan to put their kids through college, but, but many, many in this day in which we live fail to plan for their life after death. They make arrangements for everything else, but life in the eternal world. Because their tomorrow, their tomorrow is never going to come. It's, it's never going to be a problem. It's never going to be an issue. I don't have to worry about tomorrow. I don't have to worry about everything that's going on. I just was a part of a memorial service yesterday. The family stood there with me. And one of the comments was we weren't prepared for this. We didn't know this was going to happen because tomorrow didn't come for that person. And as we look around and hear the news and drive by cemeteries, we see that tomorrow never came for a lot of people. But what about tomorrow? Do we have it planned? Do we know what it holds for us? Do we have it all figured out? Is it automatic in our life? When we go to sleep tonight, is tomorrow definitely going to be there for us? The Bible tells us in the book of Luke, as we read, the rich man failed in three ways that I want to bring forth tonight, today. And I don't want to make, and I don't want you to make, the same mistakes that this man made in terms of his tomorrow. The first thing that this man did was that he presumed on the future. 
He said in verse 17, he said, and he thought within himself, what shall I do because I have no room where to bestow my fruits? And he said, I will pull down my barns and build greater barns, and I will so say to my soul, thou hast much goods laid up for many years. Take thine ease, eat, drink, and be merry. His first mistake was that he presumed on the future. It was always going to be there for him. He thought tomorrow was going to come no matter what. He had all of his provisions laid up. He had everything in stock. He had everything ready to go. And so based on the fact that he presumed on the future, he told himself to rest. To not be worried about certain things because tomorrow was always going to come in his life. No doubt the scripture lays out that he had plenty. He, he was rich. He had, he had a house. He had a large farm. He had, uh, his business was so big that he had to tear down his, his original structures and build bigger structures. Everything seemed to be going so right, nothing could go wrong. The future was all planned out. Tomorrow was going to come. Sort of like us today, the culture in which we live in. Yes, we have the difficult times, but overall things seem to be working out, don't they? No real huge difficulties coming our way. We have our challenges, yes. We have our day-to-day -day things that we must contend with. But overall, the difficulties are not insurmountable. And we presume on the future, thinking that tomorrow will always come. And so we take our ease and we rest in the things that we should not be resting in. And we say things like, if something comes up, I'll take care of it tomorrow. If I need to fix something in my life, I'll fix it tomorrow. I'll tell you what, I'll get it together, but I'll have to wait until tomorrow. Presuming on tomorrow is a disease that permeates our world. We cannot presume that you and I will have tomorrow. Today holds no promises to us at all. And tomorrow is a very, very distant future compared to everything that might happen today. One of the mottos we should have in our life is live like today is all I have so that I am prepared for tomorrow. I can't afford to presume on tomorrow. The activities in which I engage in has got to be in the face of I may not have tomorrow. The conversations in which I involve myself in, the entertainment in which I give myself to, the attitude in which I allow to take control of my life must be filtered through the concept and the understanding that tomorrow may never come. How I respond to my brother and how I respond to my sister, how I operate in my home and what I do with my children and my spouse must be in the realization that I may not have tomorrow. I can't walk away and say I'll take care of it Tomorrow, because tomorrow just might be too late. The second thing that this man did that I want to be aware of and I want to make sure that I don't have an issue with is that he relied on his position and his wealth. 
Now, most of us say, well, we don't have to worry about that. We don't have either one of them. But we all do to some degree or another. If you've got five bucks in your pocket, in some way, that can help us forget about tomorrow. You see, death shows no partiality. It doesn't care whether you're a king or whether you're a pauper. Death doesn't matter whether we are on a high social ladder or whether we have lots of friends, lots of money, or we don't have anything at all. Death is no respecter of person. When death comes our way, there's nothing that you and I can do about it. Hebrews chapter 9 and verse 27 says it's appointed unto man once to die. But after this comes the judgment. We are not promised tomorrow. The Scripture tells us that life is but a vapor. It's here, and then it's gone. Looking forward, though, it's hard to imagine and realize. Looking backwards, it seems like time has just disappeared. It was just yesterday, I think, we were all in high school. But when I'm trying to help my kids with homework, several decades ago, I don't remember these numbers. Life is something that we cannot presume on having. And relying on my place in life and relying on the wood and the hay and the stubble of life will cause me to say, take thine ease, rest, don't worry about tomorrow. Luke also tells us, the story of another young man who presumed on his future. The Bible says that he approached his father and he said, I want my future now. <clears throat> he presumed that his future would always be available to him. And he took, the Bible says, his fortune and he left home and he had wealth, and he had health, and to him, everything was fine. When I begin to presume on my position, and I begin to presume on my wealth, and I begin to presume on my health, I begin to let other things slip away from me thinking that I'll always have my health. I haven't been sick a day in my life. I haven't gone to the hospital ever. Somebody know what I'm talking about. And then all of a sudden, things change quite rapidly. Presuming on my position and my wealth takes me away of thinking about today. This young man soon found out that when his wealth was gone, so were his friends. And when he was placed in a position without is when he lost and began to lose his health. The tomorrow of friends and wealth never really came to him. It just simply passed right by him and left him in the pig pen. Prodigal son is who we're talking about. It never came the way he thought it was going to come. 
And he lost everything because he presumed that it would always be there. King Basaljar, if you've ever been a part of his stories in the Old Testament in the book of Daniel, thought that his future was all laid out. And he threw a party and he became arrogant. He became very confident in his position. And he called for the holy vessels from the temple. And the Bible says that he defiled them. Because he was so confident about his position and where he was that he took the very sacred things of God, and he defiled them. He presumed on his future, and he thought tomorrow would come. It was in that occasion that the Lord takes his finger and writes on the wall. And it was when he saw the handwriting on the wall that he realized his tomorrow may just very well be too late. Because it was that night that his life was taken from him and he went into eternity thinking tomorrow would always come. It doesn't feel that way right now. It doesn't feel that way. I've, I've heard about eternity all my life. I've heard about dying all my life and the older I get, the closer it seems to be, but yet it's far away. Funeral after funeral I have done. Been with family after family from young to old to sudden that being drug out. But it doesn't matter when life is taken. It doesn't matter if it's unexpected or if it's expected. We are not ready for it. Very few times have we been privileged to be able to say, through the pain of loss, through the discomfort of this moment, we have a hope and an understanding that they prepared for their tomorrow. But more often than not, I find myself in a position of people saying, I never thought, they never thought, we never thought this day would be here. The problem with this man was that this man forgot all about God. The problem was is that he only thought about himself and he only thought about his wealth and he only thought about his structures and he only thought about his place in life. And he said... I'll worry about these things tomorrow. But I need to tell somebody, as I have come to recognize and understand, that God does not take second place for anything or anyone. I have come to realize that as long as I put God above all things, that all things begin to work out in my life. This man said, Soul, take thine ease. Eat, drink, and be merry, for tomorrow will come. Why? Because everything is fine. Everything is going well. I have all kinds of things that I need to store up. And I've got it all ready to go. And my weeks and my months and my years are all mapped out. I don't have to worry about these things called death. And I don't have to worry about these things called eternity. And I don't have to worry about these things called heaven or hell. Because tomorrow will always come. And when it's time to worry about tomorrow, I'll worry about tomorrow. But this man, this man, left out the most important item in his life, and that was God. Can I tell you that we cannot rely on ourselves? We don't have the ability. We don't have the power. We don't have the uh, uh, anything within ourselves that will secure our tomorrow. We can plan, but we can't do anything about tomorrow. 
We can work on it, but we can't do anything about it. It's going to come one way or another, whether I'm here or whether I'm there. And my there is going to be determined a lot about where my here is right now. I can't rely on myself, Brother Jason. I can't depend upon me. I've got to depend upon Him if I'm going to make it today because I don't have promised tomorrow. The third thing that this man did incorrectly and that I don't want to do and I don't want you to do was that not only not only did he presume on the future and not only did he rely on his position and his wealth but he didn't plan for tomorrow he planned in the temporal but he didn't plan in the eternal. He had his belly taken care of, but he didn't have his soul taken care of. He had his property taken care of, but he didn't have the key to the mansion that could have been his. The Lord told him in verse number 20, he said, This night thy soul shall be required of thee. This night, you're going to die. This night is the last night that you'll be living on this earth. And no doubt he began to think, I've been planning. I've saved my money. I've bought stocks. I'm paying into my Social Security program. I've got plenty of insurance if I get sick, but I have neglected to plan for life after death, and it's too late because my soul is required. In Luke 16 and 19, the Bible says that the rich man planned for everything in this life, but he didn't plan for eternity. And in verse 23, the Bible says, In hell he lifted up his eyes, being in torment, looking at Lazarus on the other side of the chasm. He preached the message that day, and he said, Go tell my family. Go tell my friends. Go tell the people that I know to plan for tomorrow. Before it's too late. He said, if I could just get you to dip your finger into water and just let a droplet fall down upon my tongue. He says, if I can just get you to do that, I've got all the money in the world, but I can't buy a drop of water in eternity. He says, I've planned for everything except being where I am right now. He was saying to that Lazarus, the rich man in Luke 16 was saying to Lazarus, if I had only planned on this, if I had only thought about it, but it's too late for me. I was concerned with everything in the now, but I wasn't concerned with anything in the future. In Acts chapter 5, the Bible tells us of Ananias and Sapphira. They had their futures planned out. They had their money already spent. They thought they had many years ahead of them. They were tricking the church. And they were manipulating the moment. And they had planned on the temporary, but they had not planned on the eternal. The Bible says 
that that day they were confronted. The Holy Ghost confronted them. And they lied to the Holy Ghost. And they dropped dead right there because they failed to plan for tomorrow. They lied and they died. And they went into eternity presuming that their tomorrow was going to come. Can I tell you something today? That you and I must plan for tomorrow. The things that we participate in and the things that we are a part of and that are, we are around has everything to do about my tomorrow. Where I place my confidence and what I give my life to Whom is in the throne of my existence is all about what I think about tomorrow. And I ask you today, what is your tomorrow look like? Is it going to come? Are you going to be present? It was just two days ago that a man jumped out in front of the Twin Brook Metro station in front of that train, and his tomorrow never showed up. Time and time and time again, without thought or care about tomorrow, presuming it's always going to be here, people end up never seeing it. Now, I'm not preaching that we've got to be terrified and we've got to be uh, scared to death and we've got to. Uh, 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 hide and never come out. I believe that, I don't believe that. The only people that are afraid about the now are those that are afraid about their future. But when you are confident and when you are living right and when you have given yourself to God, it doesn't matter what train is coming my way. It doesn't matter if a car pulls out. It doesn't matter if a disease strikes my body. For me to die is gain at this point in my life because I have figured out how to plan for tomorrow. But let me ask you, if we knew we were going to die tonight and we had the opportunity to make things right, Would we? If we had the same opportunity as this man, and God would approach us and He would say to us, Tonight, thy soul is required of thee. What would my reaction be? How would I respond to that? There's part of me that would say, well, that's not fair. There may be part of me that would say, <laughs> whatever. There may be part of me that says, I don't believe you. What kind of reaction would I have if I knew tomorrow wasn't going to be a part of my life? How would I live this afternoon? What would I do at home? What would I say to my family? Would I tell somebody about Jesus? 
Would I run to an altar? Would I find someone to pray with? What would my reaction be? Because, ladies and gentlemen, we have no promise of tomorrow. And the question must be answered in our own hearts as to where you and I will spend eternity. It matters not this morning whether or not you believe in heaven or hell because it doesn't matter until there is no tomorrow in your life. That's when we'll believe. Have we included God in our life? Have I included the things of God in my life? Or am I going about life saying, Soul, take thine ease. Rest. For you have much time left. And if you want to worry about things, worry about them tomorrow. Do we have it all worked out? Do we say, I'll take care of this next week? This prayer life, I'll get it together next week. Oh, pastor looks busy some other time. Maybe the next time we have a revival service, I'll get my life right. Maybe when my kids graduate from school, I'll be able to have more opportunity to dedicate to God. You know, I don't know. It seems like I can't quite make it to service every single week. God understands It'll always be there for me. We'll all still be here, right? Tomorrow, it'll all be available to me, right? Tomorrow, I'll get it right, but I think I'll wait. I'll give my life to God, but I I think I'll wait because there's a couple more barns that I want to build, and there's a couple more things that I want to do. But tomorrow just might be too late. Because I don't have tomorrow, Pastor Smith. Tomorrow's in the future. And it's not available to me yet. Yesterday is already gone. It's packaged up and shipped off. It's already left me and there's nothing I can do about it. The only thing I have, the only thing that's available, is this thing called present, which is a gift that I've got to unwrap and take full advantage of right this I only have today. And I can't put off until tomorrow what I must do in my life today. The rich man thought it'll be okay. Ananias and Sapphira thought it will be okay. The prodigal son thought it'll be okay. And there are times that each of us think it's going to be okay. Let's stand. Jesus said, here I am. Oh, Jesus. Won't you please let me in? And you said, I will tomorrow. I'll do it then. Jesus said, I am he who supplies all your needs. And you said, I know, but tomorrow, tomorrow, I'd give my life tomorrow, I'd thought about today, but it's so easier to say for tomorrow. Tomorrow.
somebody in here today that the devil's convinced you that you can get it together next week, next year, some other time. But God wants somebody to know that life has a way of changing in an instant. And if you don't get tomorrow together right now, never have the opportunity. We'll never have the chance. And we'll never have the moment. Because tomorrow might be with our hands lifted to heaven. Oh yes. Tomorrow I'll do it tomorrow. Oh, yeah, that's a good idea, Pastor, probably. It's a good idea to get it together. But you know what? I got a lot going on. There's a lot more things I want to do and accomplish. Oh, I'll do it. I'll do it. I'll do it. Somebody has to step out of the aisle today. Somebody needs to make a decision. God, I've waited, but I can't wait any longer. Yeah, we're not running around. We're not hanging from the chandeliers. And in a quite honesty, this hasn't been delivered exactly like I wanted to be delivered. But the message is clear today. We don't have tomorrow in our life. Today, something might happen. We may get moved off. We may have a job transfer. We may get into an accident. A disease may creep up that we've never known about. And we don't get saved out of fear. We get saved to make sure our future is secure. But if the very thought of dying scares you to death, then you need to make sure that your future is secured in Jesus Christ. If the very thought of walking out of this building and being hit by a car frightens you to the point that you can't even hardly move, then you need to run to the altar and say, God, I need to make sure my tomorrow is secured and I can't wait until another day to make sure that I get my life right with you. And if you've ever said to yourself, one day I'm going to get this right. If you've ever said to yourself, when we get into the new building, I'll, I'll go ahead and commit myself. If you've ever said, if another week goes by, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to, I need to do this. For my kids' sake, I need to do this. For my own sake. And if you've ever said that, then God is speaking to you this morning. And he's saying, you need to make a decision today. You need to make a decision today. With your hands lifted one more time. God in Jesus' name. We need you so very badly today, God. There needs to be somebody that makes a decision right now, God, to give their life to you, to make a commitment to you, to further themselves in you. Because, God, it doesn't really matter what we think. It doesn't matter how well we think we're doing. What matters is, is when death comes knocking on our door, are we prepared to handle it? If we have any inclination of a question in our mind as to whether our life is right or whether our activity level is correct or whether we have, have slipped just a little bit, if there's any question in our mind, then I need to get that secured today and get that worked out today. Because tomorrow might very well be too late. I'm inviting you to come down to the front right now with your hands lifted up. And say, Lord Jesus, I need you in my life. Come on, it doesn't matter. This doesn't mean that you're backslid or you're lost. It doesn't matter that. 
It doesn't mean that. If you come down to the front, you're saying, God, I want to secure myself today. I want to make sure, God, that my tomorrow is secure in you. I want to make sure, Lord Jesus, that I've got everything lined out in my life. Come on, line up across the front. Give us room today. And what's come, say, Lord Jesus, is there parts of my life that are not committed to you? Is there parts of my life, Lord Jesus, that are not where they're supposed to be? I don't want to say tomorrow I'll do it, God. I don't want to say tomorrow I'll get it together, God. If there's anything I need to get together, I need to do it today, God. much easier to say. Oh, tomorrow. I promise you tomorrow. Oh, yes, Jesus. With your hands, look it up, say, Lord Jesus, help me, God. I want my tomorrow to be secure in you, God. I want to commit myself to you, Lord Jesus. Oh, yes, Jesus. Tomorrow, who promised you tomorrow? Oh, yes, God. reach over to somebody next to you and why don't we pray one for another say Lord God help us secure our future today God come on reach over to somebody and pray for them right now God help my family member Lord Jesus help my friend God help my brother my sister help me Lord God help what we do today count God for tomorrow Lord Jesus
pray for somebody say God help us help us take this serious God help us take it serious God